Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever, into the age of all ages, Amen. Um, <clears throat> we'll try to uh, speak as I fix this. <laughs> um, so today is the first Sunday of what? Anyone know the name of the month? No, it's up there. No, it's not. Um, so. Just to fo focus on how many months do we have in the Coptic Church? The calendar. Take a guess. Close. So we have 12 full months of 30 days each and one little month of five or six, depending. Uh, this year we had six. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, we'll just let you see my notes. And I'll have to tell me if I forget anything. <laughs> Actually, no. Let me let me just do it this way. Um, so, uh, as we said before, just do it this way. Um, as as we said before, um, the church divides the year into three main parts, besides the little month, right? And this is similar to what the, the the bishop or the priest says at the very end of the liturgy with the final blessing of the Holy Trinity, the love of God the Father, the grace is only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion, gift, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Right. So we can divide the year into these three, as you can see. Um, the love of God the Father, or the power of the love in the first month, and then the... the the grace of his only begotten son which we just completed because we just completed as you know the the great lent the passion week the resurrection the ascension of our savior right <clears throat> and then the third part is the fellowship and the gift of the holy spirit right <clears throat> and depending on uh, uh, when the feast comes we don't necessarily um, read all of the readings of of Ba'una, and sometimes the feast comes earlier and we, we read part of Bashans, but the theme of the Holy Spirit starts in Ba'una, which we were fortunate enough this year, everything kind of coincided perfectly. Okay, um, and uh, the Holy Spirit has a, we'll talk more in the, in, in the coming weeks of how the Holy Spirit works in our life and how we see his work very manifest in the scriptures and in the sacraments um, and in the writings of the fathers. But today, um, we see, w w does anyone remember the chapter that we read from today? Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, right? And in this, uh, well, we'll get to it in a second. But in all of the readings, we see how the Holy Spirit is, it's very clear, like maybe over 10 times in all of the readings of today, you see just the phrase Holy Spirit, right? Um, and here are just some of them that we selected for you. So we read from Romans uh, chapter 15, and here St. Paul says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. I color coded it as for later, um, but try to. So in, in these um, verses themselves, we see how the God does his work in relationship with us and what our responsibility is in the relationship with him, right? Um, <clears throat> so Holy Spirit, I just color coded yellow and blue is what God does and red is what we do, okay? So he says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, that's what we get from him, in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then later on in the same chapter, he says, I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Whatever we offer to God might be acceptable to him and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Holy Spirit sanctifies. For, and we go into these details, God willing, in, um, in the coming weeks, like I said. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me. He's saying God is working through me in my service. Right? St. Paul is saying this, in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit grants us power again. He says this more than once. Um, then St. Peter in his epistle of today, and he's starting it out. So he, after the formal introduction, um, he says, he speaks to the elect, to the, to the believers, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, sanctification of the Spirit, 
obedience and sprinkling the blood of Christ. So this is another way of saying the Holy Trinity is with you. And um, how? The Father, and here he puts the Spirit second um, intentionally. Um, but again, this Holy Spirit here sanctifies or makes us holy. Um, and what else? He keeps you by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, through faith. Um, though you don't see him yet believing. Why did the church select this passage? Because last week, um, or sorry, two Sundays ago, we see him. The 40 days of the resurrection, the disciples saw him. After the ascension, they didn't see him, right? Um, but at the Pentecost, he was with them. Um, how? Through his spirit. He says, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, um, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. <clears throat> so um, I kind of, and then the book of the Acts, um, which we like to focus on, especially during this fast, um, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Um, by the way, if you look at the book of Acts, the first um, 12 chapters or so, except for maybe chapter 9, um, deals with the holy disciples, especially St. Peter, right? And then um, chapter 13 on deals with the apostles, especially St. Paul, right? So here we're seeing both. We read from St. Peter, and now we're seeing what happened in the life of St. Paul through the Holy Spirit. He says, um, so the Holy Spirit is saying, I need St. Paul and St. Barnabas to be used um, in the service. <clears throat> he says, I have called them. The Holy Spirit is speaking, which is very rare to see in Scripture. But he speaks just like God the Father speaks and the Lord Jesus Christ speaks as well. He says, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, so he also sent them out. Um, and later on in the chapters, St. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he looked intently and he spoke. He, be he began to... Um, uh, preach by the, the the word or the work of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so, and then finally, in the Gospel of today, um, the Psalm starts saying, "Your Spirit is good; lead me in the land of right of brightness." So the Holy Spirit leads us, and then we say, "Cause me to hear your loving kindness, for in you I do trust, or do I trust?" And then the last verse of today in the Gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ says, He gives, He starts with the prayer to the Spirit or of the Spirit, the the Lord's prayer. Our Father, you know this, right? And then um, he talks about the importance of persistence in prayer. And then he finally says, um, if you're not even the people who are not close to God, you give good gifts to the, your children. How much more will God, your Heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit? That's the best gift um, to those who ask him, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is basically just a summary. Of, of what we read in these verses. This is not the only thing that the Holy Spirit does in our relationship um, with him, but he speaks to us. He teaches us. He reminds us, bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He sends us out like he sent out the disciples into our life to serve and to minister. He fills us and he dwells inside of us from the sacrament of chrismation, and he gives us power and strength to overcome all of the obstacles in our life, and he makes us holy like him. And finally, he leads us um, throughout the way into his kingdom. What is our responsibility? It's basically one thing. <laughs> um, uh, we just have to ask with faith. Um, and uh, it's easier said than done, but God does a million things, and he just says, okay, do one or two things for me. Right, um, and that's how God balances His relationship with us, um, and so that's why in the scripture of today, the disciples are like, "Teach us how to pray." They knew the importance of of the the need to connect with God, and oftentimes God is He He, he wants us to connect with Him, but we are the ones who fall short, and sometimes, we, as the Lord said, we don't have because we don't ask, or we ask but we ask wrongly. Um, or we, we, we ask, but we don't persist. So there's always something wrong with the way or what we ask for. Um, and so that's why here in the scripture of today, the Lord says, you're not asking with persistence. Um, and uh, if he, he gives us the model prayer, um, which we can go in, 
depth at, at another time, but it gives us direction of what we should be asking for when we pray. Not just reciting those words, but also contemplating on what those words direct us in our minds uh, to think about and in our hearts to desire. Okay, um, <clears throat> So uh, I'll just uh, quote um, the, the, the middle of the gospel of today. The Lord Jesus Christ gives the example of the persistent friend who comes at night. And he says, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves. And St. Augustine says, this, this um, three loaves refers to, guess what? The number three is <laughs> the Holy Trinity. And we say God is uh, the bread of life. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said he's the bread. So it's re reminding, saying, we're asking God, give me your sustenance, right? For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him and he will answer from within and say, so you you imagine, go to your friend in the middle of night and say, I have a guest, I don't have any food, um, the stores are closed, G give me some. Um, but he was reluctant to, and we'll get to that in a minute. God is not reluctant to answer our prayers, but sometimes we think he is um, because we call him friend, but he's not our friend. What does that mean? The Lord says, I call you friends. Anyone remember why he says, you're no longer servants, but friends, because the, the servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but the friend does. So when we are friends of God, we understand how he works and we accept how he works in our life. But the further we get away from him, we still call him friend, but we say, he's not being my friend. He's not doing what I asked. Well, maybe you're asking for the wrong thing. Don't get at mad, mad at God for not answering your prayer. Maybe your prayer is wrong. Maybe the timing is wrong. Um, <clears throat> but if he is really your friend you, you, and, and you believe, okay, I'm asking for the right thing and I'm persisting, then continue and in the right time, he will give you. That's why the Lord in this gospel, he says, um, he says, don't trouble me. The door is now shut. It, sometimes it appears because we are, again, not close friends with God, that he's being mean to us. God is saying no. The door is closed and my children are with me in bed. I can't, cannot rise and give to you. But he says, if you continue, I say to you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence. So the persistence is what makes us friends of God. Um, because just like the struggling with Jacob on, on, on the, um, in the middle of the night with the angel, he wrestled with God until daybreak. I will not let you go until you bless me. So this is a persistence that just doesn't happen all night, but it happens throughout our life. Um, and we have to renew our faith. So the, the, the persistence is an acknowledgement or reflection of how much faith we have in him. Um, <clears throat> because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Um, so... Uh, St. Cyril of Alexandria, he says, if you see the gift of grace is delayed, don't yield to it. Don't, don't, be, uh, don't give up. Just because God is waiting to answer, that doesn't mean he's not your friend. It's because he is your friend, he's, he's waiting for the perfect time. Um, the giver himself knows the suitable time for his gifts, as St. Cyril says. He who knocks not just once, but again and again, rattles the door with his hand. You know, sometimes you, you ring the doorbell and nothing happens, and you mean a couple times it happened to you, and then you start knocking and go around and look like you have to see what's going on, right? They said they would be here, or, um, uh, and maybe they're asleep or something. So, so he says, don't just knock once on the door of God. Don't just pray for something one time. If it is the right thing, um, or if even if it's not the right thing, if you continue to pray, you realize maybe I'm not asking for the right thing. Let me modify my prayer. Um, and then you say, no, this is the right thing. Let me just persist. Maybe it's not the right time. Um, <clears throat> uh, then the master will open uh, even against his will. Sometimes even, which is not necessarily the best thing, but sometimes even with our prayers, we can ask for things that's not 100% God's will. And then it happens and we're like, oh, that wasn't the right thing. Um, now I understand. Sometimes even God gives us what we don't what we don't need um, just to show us that our prayers were n n uh, a little off track. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but 
he answers to show us, I can give you um, all things, and and not for that for us to lose hope um, in him. Uh, okay. So then the Lord talks about three examples, the bread, the fish, and the egg. And St. Augustine has a very good contemplation on this. But the Lord says, if a son, because we are children of God, asks for bread from any father, will he, will he give him a stone? Of course not. If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? Right? So St. Augustine contemplates on these symbols here. And he says, these three things, bread, fish, and egg, remind us of faith, hope, and love. So we ask with faith, hope, and love, right? <clears throat> um, how, I'll just kind of briefly summarize what St. Augustine writes here. He says, of those three things that the apostle commends, faith is either signified by the fish. Why? Because the water, he gives two examples. So water in general symbolizes the world or the, the sea because it goes up and down and we can drown in it and it's not stable, Right? Uh, but we're in the world, just like the fish is in the world, but not of the world, right? The fi can the fish drown? No. <laughs> um, he's over. He's uh, so he says um, when when we bap when we baptize, we go into the water, but it has no power of us, and we rise above the water. And when Christ walked on the water to show that I am above the world, or I am victorious of anything the world has to offer, anything that the devil has to offer. Um, so he says. Because of the water of baptism, we are the fish, or because the, the waves don't hurt the fish. Um, <clears throat> so um, wh when we ask, we ask with faith and we ask for faith. Um, uh, and will God give us the serpent if we ask for the fish? If we ask for faith, will, will God give us what is like the devil? Um, and remember what happened in the book of Genesis with the serpent. When, when after he tempted Eve and she ate and Adam ate and then God started the judgment process and um, announcing the consequences of their actions starting with Adam and Eve and then going to the serpent. What was the, what was the condemnation or the curse of the serpent? Anyone know? He said, on your belly you shall go. Um, so the stomach is on the ground. Here the, the fathers explain saying this is a symbol of the gluttony or the love of the world. Is he stu stuck to the world. But we as um, uh, humans who walk um, above the world and our heads are lifted up into the sky, um, this is how we, we live on, on the world but the serpent doesn't the serpent so if god if we're asking for faith god is not going to make us like the serpent of course not um, <clears throat> um and the second thing we have the egg of hope he's here he says the egg symbolizes hope because the the chick is still not alive but will be or um it's alive inside but um is not born yet um but will be it is not seen but it is hoped right and that's one reason why we have that egg here to remind us of the resurrection, that there's life inside, but you don't see it yet. Um, <clears throat> and as St. Paul says, hope that is seen is not hope. But the scorpion doesn't look forward, um, it looks behind, or the power is in, 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 in behind. Um, <clears throat> and we have the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Um, uh, we forget, Saint, as St. Paul says, forgetting the things that are behind, and reaching up to those who are ahead. Forget the, the bad past that we might have, and we look for the good future, which is not in this in this world, but in the world to come. Um, and this is what gives us um, the hope. And when we pray, we pray for the things that are to come. Not tomorrow, necessarily, but um, when we leave this world. Uh, <clears throat> the last thing he says is the bread. The bread symbolizes love because the greatest of these is love. And among foods, bread certainly surpasses all others in, in value. Um, <clears throat> according to St. Augustine, here he says this. Um, but, uh, and if we ask bread, God is not going to give us a stone. If we ask for love, he's not going to give us a hard heart. Um, 
Um, but with persistence, even out of the rock can flow rivers of, of living water. Um, and God softens our heart by the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. So we ask for faith, and with faith, we ask for hope, and with hope, and we ask for love, and with love for God and for God's children. Um, this is uh, what St. Augustine says. And then finally he says, It may be that these gifts signify something more appropriate, yet he, he who knows how to give good gifts to his children urges us to ask, to seek, and to not. So it ends here with the persistence um, that we started with, the persistence with faith. Um, <clears throat> the last uh, thing here we say, and we won't have time to go in this today, but we say, we have prayers for for God to be with us and for God to forgive us. And we have prayers directed to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The ones to the Holy Spirit are, are very few, actually, and most of them we do silently. Um, because one of the Father says, we pray to the Father through the Son in the Spirit. Meaning, um, God... If God is already with us through his spirit, we don't have to ask him to come. He's already here, <laughs> which, which is why in the scripture, um, oftentimes um, the, the apostle will say praying in the spirit, not praying to the spirit or for the spirit. Um, because the one who is already sanctified, we, we already have the anointing. We, al we already are chrismated and the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Maybe we don't interact with him enough. When we pray, we can't pray without the Holy Spirit in the right way. We can say words, but that's not necessarily prayer. Um, so <clears throat> that's why St. Paul says in the Ephesians here, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And then he explains a little more in Romans. Um, we don't have to, time to go too much into this, but he says, the Holy Spirit helps in our weaknesses for even when we pray, we don't know what to pray for. But the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us. He prays in us and through us and with us, um, with groanings that cannot be uttered. Um, so the idea here is we want to interact more with the Holy Spirit so we can pray better within the Holy Spirit. Um, and when we do, then we feel connected more to God. Um, this takes a lot of effort. That's why the, the idea here of the persistence. Um, and that's why the church gives us so many prayers to practice with. Even sometimes... There, there, it's a struggle. Like, for example, when we think of the uh, the midnight prayer or the, the commemoration of the saints, we're repeating the same phrase over and we're just changing the name. Um, but that's the, the one who insists and persists is the one who receives. And that's the spirit. So the church is trying, training us um, to do more repetitions when you're working out in the gym. So you need more repetitions um, to, to get anywhere um uh so the same thing in our spiritual life we need more repetition i don't feel the words just say them anyway i don't feel like c coming to church or to read just do it anyway and ask god to grant his spirit to 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 do it in you um <clears throat> so may the god of grace grant us the blessing of the holy spirit to recognize and to pray um in the spirit um seeking his grace constantly and we have blessing upon blessing until, um, uh, until we ask God to give us the faith and the hope and the love to persevere that we may be one with him and he with us. And glory be to the, him now and from into the age of